when you take the high road towards spirituality as opposed to how can I pay my rent, how can I get my little dirty son out of jail, how can I get my kids to straighten up and fly right. Right. So, so the key is mm-hmm. you want to take the higher road, always looking and asking for wisdom, greater knowledge, greater understanding, and, and, and higher questions. Good, good, great. Lots of conversation going on. We are live in the remix. I am your host, of course, Miss Blue, and we are speaking with Brother Panic, a remix first here. This is going to be part one of a series that we will continue to run. Next Sunday we will be airing part two. Currently right now over here on Blog Talk Radio, over 65 people in the chat form here listening to Brother Panic as well as many, many others over on the RemixRadio.com. We're going to continue the conversation and we'll be opening up the phone lines here just shortly. So if you have a question or a comment or you would like to share, please call 646-652-2711. Now my question is this for you, Brother Panic, and I know we've spoke about this. What about when spirits are contacting you? What sort of is the message that we should take out of that? Well, um, the first and foremost, and I want to get into these methodologies, what I've noticed, right. what I've noticed is people don't understand mostly the mentality to have, to have or the context or the language of how spirits talk. You know, some would say, well, they talk in the ancient language of Metuneta. No, they don't. They talk in symbols, and since you are in a brain and you are human, the symbols that they give you, the brain reformats it in the same story form you call the dream or the same images you know every day. So what you actually have to become is a decoder of symbols and understand symbols. For instance, everybody says this. When you dream of fish, somebody's going to be pregnant. What you have to understand is fish represents the vesica Pisces, and it represents new birth. It represents, well, the Christ is the fish. The Christ, the resurrected Christ is a new birth, a new day, a new beginning, a new gateway. So if you see a fish in your dreams, instead of asking why your grandmother was holding a fish, the symbol of knowing what a fish means means your grandmother is either she either went to a new level, let's say she was dead, she even went to a new level, or maybe going to a new level even if she was alive, or maybe something that she told you in, in, a, in a lifetime when you was kid, a kid you need to ponder on because it will bring you to a new gateway, a new birth in your consciousness, and these type of things. So when spirits are contacting you, it's very rare I get actual actuality. It is mm-hmm. actual symbols that they talk. So you'll be on a train, let's just say, you know, traveling and and going through. Most people have trains and reoccurring dreams on trains. Now, what I I come to find out is those, uh, uh, what do they call those nerves in your actual brain, those, all of those folds and wrinkles. And and the actual thing is called the tunnels of set. It's also representing dimensions. And you see in the uh, third or second or third matrix when Neo was in the trains and he was lost. Exactly, so yes. Trains also represents the labyrinth. I think they call it the synaptic nerves in the brain. The train also represents the labyrinth. When you see um, those movies where those, uh, they in these mazes or the rat with the cheese, look right. at these mazes to get the cheese. All that represents the brain, and it shows up in the dream as the train. So you'll notice when you're on these trains in these dreams, you're actually searching for stuff. So you would ask a question, you will find you on these trains, and the feeling, what I learned to understand is when I wake up and have one of these reoccurring train dreams, I would say, did I find, was I satisfied, what did I bring to bed, first of all? What question was I asking? What am I dealing, what particular study am I trying to deal with? And Based upon the dream, it'll tell you how far you are in it. If I felt lost on the train, if I felt satisfied on the train, if I felt I had a destination on the train, if I felt someone was leading me on the train, or if I was leading someone on this train, Um, all of these things that I feel happy about being on the train, all of these things are how you investigate and interpret a dream 
as opposed to sitting there worrying about the train. You, you, once you understand the symbol of it, then you get to understand, you, you, you have to interpret it a little bit more holistically. And ultimately is how you, how you felt about it which matters the most. The emotion is very key, very key to understanding. How you felt about it matters the most. So where do you go to start to be able to decode these things? That's what mythology was supposed to be for. That's why they teach mythology to you at such a young age, because every character in mythology is nothing more than a symbol. When you tell the story of the mythology, these are how these symbols interact with each other. So then when you grow up, more than Greek mythology that they told you, which is still ours anyway, we get into the Egyptian mythology. And then the key is, as a scientist, the first thing you want to start doing is corresponding these things. You want to be able to say, well, Osiris is nothing but Shiva in Hindu, uh, or, or, or Set is nothing but Hades, and, and Oshun, Isis, or Zuli, same thing. Um, Sekhmet is nothing but Durga. Kali is nothing but Sekhmet as well. When you start corresponding and just reading the stories, you start to realize what you're reading is um, the symbols interplaying with each other. So once, right. you start, once you start understanding these symbols through mythology, that's one of the first things everyone should deal with, not just Egyptian mythology, all mythology, or at least get to know the characters and how they act. And then once you start seeing these things, and then you should be able to correspond these symbols to the human body as well. Correspond these symbols to colors, which is chakras. So once you make that as above, so below, as within, so without connection with these deities, you'll be able to understand the symbol that they represent, and therefore whenever these symbols start to show up, you'll be able to decode it. One of the easiest ways to start to test yourself is in movies. Movies are nothing but interplaying of symbols. In this case, it's a white agenda trying to use our symbols to become us, symbolically with the hero figure, the love story, the, the villain figure, and, and you name it. You can go on for days. They're just All these movies are nothing but our mythologies replayed over, just using their white faces to give them a mythology to line themselves up with symbols. So once we get to know the symbols, that's that's ground one. We get to see how they interplay. And then right. moving, forward, moving forward with a ritual, let's say you're trying to create a reality, you then start to use these elements and symbols to your benefit so you can then create a reality based upon you understanding the symbology which exists within yourself, in the cosmos, and on Earth. You are collecting these symbols to, to, to correlate them to your specific reality. That's all they're doing in movies. For white people, the greatest ritual they have is nothing but movies. And it's even sad because they still have to use our shit to try to make it happen for them. Okay. So once you get into the mythology, you don't have to go deep. I would suggest um, the first thing you do is just do the correspondence. If you're not going to read, you know, I don't think we even have time to read Greek mythology, then Roman mythology. Um, get the book, the ancient, uh, the Dictionary of Ancient uh, Deities. I think yeah. Patricia Houston, Dictionary of Ancient Deities. It's on my MySpace page. When you read, let's just say, Venus, if you look up Venus in this book, it will, all, it will give you the correspondence of Venus. So it will also say Aphrodite, Isis, Kuan Yin, let's just say. So then you would look up Kuan Yin, you may find two others. You, you would look up Aphrodite, you may find two others. So this being the case, you will then find you have just studied ten love goddesses. And when you read their little paragraph in this book, you would then be able to say, you would then be able to say, I have a more holistic understanding. So let's say the only thing you know is a sh Oshun, to understand different levels of Oshun, it would, be, it would be beneficial for you to have this book and beneficial to see what else corresponds with her outside exactly. of Ifa. 
and, you know, outside of even Voodoo as Urzuli, something that's totally opposite. See what, see what the Oshun is in China. So once 